began with his grandparents at a crossroads called Analecki Cross. Analecki, I think, is the derivation of a stony place, West Wicklow. And his grandmother and grandfather were there. And his father was a carpenter. Well, originally, it, it was the house of the lady who, whom he married that he, he married into the house and the uh, bits and pieces and around it. And uh, he was a carpenter. And he set up um, a shop and made coffins from oak and elm. And he made cartwheels and various other things. We're in just on the corner of Gill Street, several place, and we're going up Sheriff Street, where the bridge is in the background, a Spencer Bridge. When we were kids, there was a coal yard here, which uh, we used to take coal out in the deck. But in the day, we swam in the canal, which is the end of the Royal Canal before it goes into the Liffey. Spencer Dock and the bridge was um, all the kids, we fished there. I used to mitch and fish under the bridge. Like I used to hide my school bag over Sheriff Street, you go over the bridge, there was a Protestant church down there. It was called Barnabasets. And there was a graveyard. And I used to hide my, hide my school bag under the, one of the gravestones. The bridge, we used to climb up to the top of it. And, um, my name was on the top of for years. But I mean, we swam in the dock and got away with it. We swam up further um, towards the strand in on the railway. And as you get up there, we were going across railways when there was goods trains going, coming from the north, the northern line. And um, it was just things like that. All the kids got up to it. Walking with her along the canal to Fibsborough, we met swans feeding precariously at the edge of our path, saw houses of people she knew, places where she stopped for a chat. We were snug between water and rail line. Exploring the Whitworth Road, the other side of the canal, without her was a different world. The noise swallowed us whole, buildings towered, danger lurked in laneways. If we reached the top, we were too far to find our way back home. Follow the line. We enter a calm room. Our old friend welcomes five women into her home. We read, share, explore poems. Sun shining through windows warms, but autumn leaves fall. Sudden gusts ruffle water, cast crystal necklaces on the shore. Waves sparkle sapphire-wise, cerulean sky, symphony of blues, before stratus clouds gather, turn the landscape opaque. We pace the length of the beach, the length of our memories, journeys on old steam trains, picnics every Sunday, little girls braving breakers, brother rowing out further, young seals following mothers, cormorants fishing currents. You're in the heart here of, um, of Foley Street and Corporation Buildings. And um, this is where I was born and reared. And this park here, you can see at the moment, is a fairly small area, but it's a very big community. A lot of people lived in this, in this small area here. And I remember playing in Foley Street here behind me. This is my playground, as you see at the moment. There's a lot of derelict buildings around this neighborhood at the time. We used to run from Foley Street and the Corporation Buildings here. We play all the children's games, sing the children's songs. People used to sell winkles, penny apples, busy drinks here. We used to play games till all hours in the evening time. And I remember on one occasion as well, it used to be Friday. You look around, people coming, coming, coming out of the factories behind me here. It'd be around five o'clock, five in the evening. And we smell a fried fish in the area here. I mean, now we, we know it's Friday because the smell of fish in the air. I remember going up in the evening time for my dinner, hoping that I'd get a fish for my dinner, but it was bangers and mash. 
this area has a lot of memories for me and it's a very special area for me. And I walk around this area here with kids the mama and just think back and I remember the times I had as a kid here and look at my kids at that moment and just thinking and will always hold a special special memories for me. Small journeys. Being just five, my world was small. All play happening between Little Britain Street and the small park opposite St. Mitchin's Church, where big boys thundered shots of handball as I charged along the trimmed lawn, laughing from gate to gate. I found contentment in confinement, except for rare occasions when, spellbound by curiosity, I broke loose. Mam took me shopping one morning to Henry Street, where excitement gripped me. One second her hand held mine. The next I was weaving through a mass of bodies, fascinated, until, stopped by the absence of her comforting hold, I panicked. A friendly guard took me to the bridewell, where I waited till Mam tracked me down. It was the only time I was ever in prison. The Lost Koala. There's a heavy yellow suitcase going round and round and round in Bristol on conveyor number two. An Australian in Dublin at conveyor number five is waiting for this suitcase to arrive. One could tell that she's Australian by her t-shirt, shorts and sandals and the plastic bag from Sydney Duty Free. And she's shivering with the cold, in spite of being told, dressed for winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, many of the time I spent here on this step here with my, my mum and all our neighbours and all the other children. I was brought home here from the Rotunda Hospital in the year 1945 and I stayed here for 13 years, had great times here. We just lived just behind here. We lived in just one little room with my father, my mother and me. We didn't have a lot but we were happy and we, we, we played a lot of games. Now the games we played were chess, drafts, and we played a lot of uh, cards. So all in all, we had a very good fun time. And then I spent most of my time over there in Mountjoy Square, played round towers, tennis, and all of the good things that made us happy. At the age of 14, I moved over to the far side of the square, which was 60 Mountjoy Square. But then I returned here in 1970, when my father died. So I stayed there maybe until 75. I've always been drawn back here to the place where I was born and where I was reared. And here I am in 2018, back again here at number three, the square. Post in the letter, aged four. Don't lose it. Be careful. Don't drop it. You know where. Take care. Don't linger. I'll be here. Watching, waiting. Off you go. Slow, no running. Wave when you reach the box. I'll wave back. I love you, my little fox. Network Traveller. Today, the frivolous youth take the well-travelled highway. Horizontal, unruffled, high speed and reckless, mocking the dumb rules set by elders and rooting for a new regime, hot, brash, flashier. By rail, they hunch in raptness over laptops and tablets, disassociating with the populace. Insulated in their singular biospheres, cables sprouting from their ears. While text walkers blindly navigate gridlocked pavements in zombie-like trance, leaving the digitally undistracted to dodge and sidestep. I sit 
in a rustic garden in sloping, wine-growing heartland, part wild down along the river, part gardened in a crowded way. My eye catches pockets of rust sculptures between bushes, metal precipitating into chemical compounds over time. A robot passes underfoot, fuzzy logic garden cutting tool. It captures me by its discord in this wild, cultivated scene. Warm sunshine beams down from bright sky. Aircraft sounds reverberate on this heady mixture to the silent hum of the moor. Let me tell you about the place I found one summer's day. There was not much happening that day. I was just sitting around the house and said to myself, what was I doing? I would go for a walk. So this time around, I would take a different way. So as I went on my way, I seen a place called Irish Town Nature Park. So I went along the pathway. It started to lead me up onto a mountain. It was like a place where time had stood still overlooking the sea. I sat down on a seat and as the background of the city centre started to fade away, it was like, a, was like all the stress of life was gone, if only for a short time. Most of us worry about everyday things, but being in a place like this, all the other things did not matter. It goes to show you, if you take a different pathway in life, you'll never know where it will take you. Sometimes all you have to do is try something new. The Ghost of Mountjoy Square. The Ghost of, of Mountjoy Square. The women clean in tenement hallways, children playing in the dark and shadows. Seeing them sitting on the granite steps, knitting with clacking of their needles. And sometimes goats come wandering by with moving lips as they chew the weeds from the broken pathways and disappear through the stables and piggeries of the crumbling laneways. Yeah.